checked in this morning, and the call for your vote to uh, suggest that we ramp up our efforts in support of Medicare is an important question, and I hope that you'll answer it and give us the opportunity and the permission, really, to be able to do things, uh, really, really important things. It's, it, it's not just about telescopes and Medicare. And if there's anything that I really want to communicate in the few minutes that I have with you this morning, it is that um, the principle of Allah Aina, which drives, drives so much of our work in the community and in the schools today, and has been such a central part of our identity as Kanaka, is really always on the line with the state, with the state. We never, we, we have never won that battle to convince people that the real reason for Hawaii's existence in the world is for this island to flourish and for it to be a place where Kanaka can live. Constantly, and we've been doing this pretty actively for the last 40 years. So I sang this song the other night in um, in Ho'olehua for the Riddies and for a group of funders from the Conservation Fund and the Series Foundation who were there. No 
ਮੁਖੇ ਖਾਉਆ ਕਾਉ ਮੇਖੇ ਅਲਭੂਰੀ ਕਾਉ ਨੋ ਕਪੰਨੋ of you older people know this and everything that we were doing we were being trained to be Americans we were we spoke english we talked about colleges away from home and it, it seemed really difficult to find ways to experience being hawaiian in the 1960s and early 1970s and one of the ways i did was by hiking all parts of the island and going to places that look like 
places that my ancestors would have seen with the same eyes. And so that's what this song is about. But it's also a kind of sense that something was changing in Hawaii in 1982 that my grandmother may not have been completely aware of, that people were starting to coalesce around different ideas and our language was being heard again and we had a better sense of our history than maybe we were taught. suggest that that has changed and that for our, our younger people, for our keiki, for our mokuna, it, it's, it's actually about taking this place back. And I have to tell you in the strongest terms that it, it really is actually our collective responsibility. And I'm, I'm looking at people who are, have been involved in Hawaiian education and who have the, the ability not just to touch hearts and minds of young people, <coughs> but really have the ability to reach out and make partnerships with so many other organizations. And, and I'm calling on us to treat the child, the state, 
and its legislature and the governor and all of these people as just recalcitrant children who really do not understand. No, they understand the enormity of things. They possess neither the will nor the ability to make the kinds of changes that are necessary in this place. And I'm telling you this. This is two years of experience in working with state governments and working with other partners and realizing that the other partners are more willing, they are more intelligent, they are more nimble, and they are more willing to engage with us than the state of Hawaii. Now, in this, I do not necessarily include Office of Hawaiian Affairs. See, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, even if they are as difficult to work with, and I'm just going to be really gentle in case that we have trustees here, um, they are still, it's ours. We are the beneficiaries, and we need to hold them responsible when they come. And we don't get to basically just give up on it. But I have, for all intents and purposes, given up on the state of Hawaii. And I think that there's more to be done with other partners, with other funders, with other agencies, and um, it's where we're going. Um, The song that I want to do is Hawaiian song, but I want to talk about not just the young men who sacrificed themselves for the island. I want to talk about that organization, Protecta Walabe Ohana, that still continues to work on, on the island to this day and its longevity. I want to talk about the way in which that central message of Aloha Aina was actually recoined by Walter Ritty, Emmett Aluli, and George Helm in a meeting in 1976 at the Aluli household in Lahaina as the young men were trying to come to an understanding of what it was they had experienced when they landed on Kanaloa in January of that year. Now, you should know this story, right? They, this host of people tried to access Kaholawe not because they were trying to save that island. This was part of a sort of a scheme to call attention to the United States about its failures to live up to um, agreements with Native Hawaiians. And it was an attempt to get the United States to consider reparations to Native Hawaiians in the early 1970s. That's why that meeting was called. That's why 100 people got on boats and sailed across. Um, but only, as far as I know, only one boat landed. That's the story. And, and two of the young men walked to the top of the island. And the devastation they saw affected them to this day. And they didn't know how to express what they felt. They couldn't figure out why they should be so troubled. I mean, they were activists. They belonged to Hui Alaloa. They'd been marching all over Molokai for years. They had faced down the state and other agencies before. Why should, why should Kaho'olawe have affected them so much? And they reached back to, you know, that old political party, that old Hawaiian language newspaper, to people like Navahi and Emma Navahi. And they said, this is what we believe and this is what we know. The land, the land is conscious. The land loves us. We have a responsibility to the land. I tell you truly, every single thing we have in education, from where I, from where I stand, and that includes Hawaiian language education, is based on that. It's based on that belief. A lot. Every single thing we've done. These guys were 27, 28 years old. They were your children.
So when I sing this song now, it is not just in mourning for George and for Kimo and for others who have given their lives for this movement. It is also a recognition that the voice and their belief and their passion and their understanding of who our ancestors were and how they cared for this place prevail, and they prevail in us and in the work that we do. I can recall the way your voice was filled the room. We would all be stilled by your melody. And now your voice is gone into the sea. listened to and understood. And I honestly, I, I don't know, I don't know what would become of this place if it weren't for you. In 
calling ourselves uh, to the struggle to make Aloha Aina the principle of life here. And it's, it's a grand struggle. It's an important struggle to win. I want to encourage you to uh, think like our ancestors did. I think of those um, prophets like Kapihe, yeah? and you know, he, he's predicting that things will fall and things will rise and everybody says, that's just really remarkable that he's able to do this. And I, and I say, I'll tell you, we're doing this already. We're doing this not through some kind of magic, hocus pocus, but because we're paying really close attention to what's going on around us. And that's what they did. Their connections with Ali'i, their connections with the land, their connections with Kona'iki. They understood when the wind was changing. And they understood when times of crisis were approaching. And, and we know this. The, the global climate change thing is, is adding pressure to where we are. But it's not a surprise to us. We've seen this coming for years. And we are positioned to do something about it, and we are doing something about it in our schools. We're doing something about this in our communities. Uh, from Waipa to Kanuoka Aina, everywhere, on every island, these initiatives have, are taking place. And they're, and they're taking place. I'm sorry, I, I got down on the state before. Yes, yeah, there's some state support. Um, we have agencies who are, and who, who, who are doing their part, yes, because I still have to come to the legislature this next year. <laughs> But, but the truth of the matter is, I, the faith we have is really in each other, in the things that we do together. And I encourage you just to continue to make those partnerships and to show up and to continue to do the things that you're doing. They are really building a movement that is so much larger than the PKO, than Hui Aloha and save hair care. Koku Hawaii. You know, there's just thousands of us now. And our children are wishing us. And our grandchildren are wishing us. So I just want to leave you with this last song. And I hope I haven't overstayed this. Um, I would like I would like you to really vote yes that we ramp up on Mauna Kea. It isn't just the telescopes. It's the way they went about it. It's the way they really dismissed any kind of sense that they were accountable to that place or to the people who treated the place as sacred. Um, this is an important fight to win. But win or not, um, it's an important fight to engage in. And we should engage in this fight with all of our determination all of our aloha, all of our passion, all of our willingness. We want that permission to do that. I really love this song. It was written by my classmate, our classmate. That one, there was only one telescope on that mountain. Small little thing that nobody could see. My friends and I are sometimes roam trails of Mauna Kea, and in the evening we come home to see a standing
and 